sub cal gain, right? Or here's some projectile motion. So what do we got here? Well, we got this rock that's uh, flying off a cliff, right? And uh, you know, it's uh, 76 kilograms. It's going horizontally off this cliff. Uh, and it wants to know, first of all, uh, what is the minimum speed of the rock so that when it leaves the cliff, it's just gonna clear this first ledge here. And then it wants to know how far away will it land after it clears that ledge. So let's, uh, let's get started on this. So I have these kind of projectile motion problems. What I want to do is you want to find how long it's going to take the object to hit the ground. And you want to find that time, basically. That time is going to be very valuable. So if you want to find how long it's going to take to hit the ground, of course, that's going to be a, something with y. So we know our y equation. y is equal to, you know, uh, acceleration divided by 2 t squared plus v naught t plus, you know, y naught, right? So let's look at this equation and analyze. So acceleration, if you're looking in the y direction, gravity is going to be pushing down on it. So acceleration is going to be gravity, uh, negative 9.81. Uh, v naught, okay, so what's its initial, or its initial velocity in the y direction, right? So I guess you could label this v naught y. Well, it's going horizontally off this cliff. So if you think about it, it's not going up or down in the y direction. So this is going to be zero. And then for y naught, um, we can just take this to be the starting point. Uh, so we can just get rid of this, perfect. And then what our equation is going to look like is y. We're going to see how long it takes to go down 20 meters, right? So y is going to be negative 20. That's where we're going to end up. So then I said this is going to be, you know, negative 9.81 for gravity divided by 2 because that's the equation, the kinematics equation, and then t squared. So we just have this one equation. So we move the, uh, that over, so it's going to be negative 40 divided by negative 9.81 is equal to t squared. So then if you take the square root of this, you're going to actually get t by itself. And that time is 2.2 seconds, right? 2.2 seconds. Great. Okay, so now we know how long it takes to follow that on. So now what we can do is we can put over in our x direction. Okay, so how long is it going to go in 2.2 seconds? Oh, never mind. That's the wrong number. 2.02. I wrote it down wrong. Okay, so x. Is the same thing, right? Acceleration divided by two t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. So um, let's see. So we, we're trying to find x. We're trying to see how far we go. So let's think acceleration, but in the x direction. Is it accelerating in the x direction? No, it's just going to be going at the same speed x direction. The gravity only acts in the y direction. So this is going to be zero. V naught. That's what we have here. Uh, we get. We're given that v naught, right? Actually, no, we're trying to find that v naught. Okay. And then t we have, and then x naught, we can take this to be the starting point too. So it's that. So what we're going to end up is x is equal to v naught and the x direction times time. So we're trying to find v naught, so let's go ahead and subtract that time, or divide by time. So x divided by t is equal to v naught in the x direction, which is actually just going to be the initial velocity in general. So we have these values, right? We're trying to see how long it takes to go 100 meters. And we know that our time is 2.02 seconds. So that's going to be our v naught x, which is going to be equal to uh, 49.5 meters a second. So that's the initial velocity that you need. That's part A. So part B asks um, basically how far past it. So our object, you know, it's going to look something like this. It's going to go down and then it's going to clear, but it's going to keep going and it's going to see how far down this 25 meter section is it going to land. So let's do that again. We need to basically run over all the steps again. So how long is it going to take to fall, right? Let's run back to our equation, which we have here. So we have y is equal to uh, negative 9.81 divided by 2 t squared. And then we know that v naught is equal to 0 and y naught is equal to 0. So we're seeing how long it takes to go 20 meters plus 25 meters, right? So we're going to fall 20. And then another 25 is equal to negative 9.81 divided by 2 t squared. So then, you know, multiply this over, so this will be negative 90 divided by negative 9.81. Take the square root of that is equal to t. And this number is, um, wait, 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 oh, that's the wrong question, okay. Uh, this is going to be 3.03 .03 seconds this time. Um, that's how long it's going to take to fall. So then we can run it back to this equation, which we had over here. x is equal to uh, v naught xt. So we're trying to see how far we're going to go. We're looking for x this time, and what we have t. So x is equal to, you know, we found it to be 49.5, and then 3.03 .03 seconds is how long it takes. Calculate this, and you get 
150 meters. So that's how far from our starting point that we landed in the x direction. But that's not actually the number we're looking for. We're trying to find um, how far from the ledge we're coming from. So we know that this is 100 meters and we know that we go 150 meters. So you can just say 150 minus 100 is equal to 50 meters. And that's how far from the ledge we go. So there are your two answers. Let's say you solve these kind of problems. Uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys. So I hope you like the new elevated angle. I literally just put a chair up on a desk and I'm getting some weird looks. But you know, it's all good. It's all good. All right. So yeah, stick around. Thanks for the support, guys. See you in the next one.